My name is Paul Nurse. I'm president of the Royal Society. That's the UK National Academy of Science. And later in this week, I'm um, visiting mainland China for the first time um, as part of an official Royal Society de delegation um, to discuss how we can improve science collaboration and cooperation between Chinese and UK scientists. The Royal Society has actually had um, a very long-term relationship with China and Chinese scientists. That, this stretches back um, to the 18th century when we received specimens of um, seeds and plants, for example, um, and how they might be used um, for um, various purposes, including cooking, but also um, for medicines. It was 50 years ago that um, the Royal Society had its um, first official um, visit, so I'm looking upon this as the 50th anniversary of that. And of course, since that time, um, the um, contacts between the two countries have been hugely increased. The um, Federal Royal Society and English biochemist Joseph Needham was really the first um, British person to fully understand all that Chinese science has contributed over the years and he's written a number of books um, when he was publishing about this issue and I was privileged to hear him speak in the uh, 1970s when I was a student. So there's a good historical background for our links and um, I'm very excited about going. The uh, scientific contacts between the Royal Society and the uh, Chinese Academy of Science and other Chinese scientists um, takes uh, various forms. Um, we have a, a number of exchange schemes. Indeed, Chinese scientists are the uh, most highly represented of any nation on our um, uh, premier exchange fellowship scheme, Newton Fellowships. Um, Chinese scientists um, are involved in the publishing of and, and writing articles for our um, journals, and we also have um, foreign members in China. Um, it is my hope that we can improve those collaborations, improve those exchanges, improve um, more work between our um, two countries, and also to get more foreign members um, from China into the Royal Society. I'm going to give a couple of speeches whilst I'm in China. Um, one of them will be about my own scientific research. I still run a laboratory here in London, so I'm going to talk about work that my graduate students and postdocs have been doing in the last couple of years. Um, and that's work on what controls the division of cells, which I've worked on most of my life. And I have um, a second talk, which is more um, policy related. Um, this will um, discuss issues about um, how we recognize good science, um, how we can make decisions about grants so that good science is, um, is, is properly supported, and some of the complications of deciding um, uh, between projects that are closer to applications and those um, that are more at the discovery end um, of research. And this is aimed at um, how to promote good science and make sure good science is promoted. Then, in addition, um, I want to tackle some of the big global challenges that face the world um, to which uh, science and technology can make major contributions. And I've identified two in particular. Uh, one of them is climate change and the second is um, uh, food sustainability. And um, how um, the work in, in China and the work in the UK is illuminating both of these important issues and how um, collaboration can be complementary between um, the two countries because we approach these issues in different sorts of ways and um, we can contribute um, it together more than we can uh, contribute separately. And then finally I'm going to um, consider how we can improve our collaborations, improve our contacts and indeed use science as a sort of diplomatic tool because scientists across the world use the same language, we think in the same sorts of ways, and it's a way of reducing the barriers between countries and influencing areas outside science um, because of the success that scientific contacts can make. So I'm excited about going and hope to achieve a lot whilst I'm there.